Hello and welcome to a lesson on architecture terminology and this is in domain three. This is a two-part video because there are quite a few terms that we need to go over before you jump into domain three other topics such as cryptography and and SCADA and the other terms that are mentioned herein. So let's just jump right in. And I apologize, these are, as the whole CBK is, it's just a mashup of terms that are compiled for us to know for the exam. So here we go. Code signing is the first term. Code signing basically refers to the digital signature on software when you are trying to install something. Many of you have probably seen something like this pop up when you try to install something for the first time. The operating system will check the digital signature of the software, and sometimes this will say it's unknown. This term virtualization sandboxing, you probably are already familiar with this. This basically is just talking about a PC or an operating system that runs a virtual machine within that machine. So a PC within a PC. So for those of you who are doing work at home right now and you're remoting into your desktop, this is your PC here. And what you're doing is you're creating a secure connection into your desktop and it's basically running a virtual machine inside your machine. Uh, and it doesn't have access to this machine. It can't make changes to this machine. You're having full control over this machine. So of course you can make changes to that. But uh, sandboxing is also used to run uh, software testing and things like that. Trusted platform module refers to the specialized chips that are, that are embedded into devices for device authentication. It can also be used to encrypt drives that so that wherein a drive is removed, it would be impossible to decrypt it without the right key that's embedded within the chips. File integrity monitoring, that refers to, well, it uses a hashing function. And the best way to think of this is to think of, of the hash as a machine readable property of a file or of a file system or, or something. And so basically, let's say, for example, you have some documents here that have a description or properties attached to them. So for example, if this was an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper folder or whatever, you might have a hash that looks like this. And that's the, that's the computer's way of saying, this is what it is. These are the properties. And this is oversimplified, I know. So I apologize for that, for those of you who are more educated on this than I am. If you change anything in that file, let's say you change a letter or you change the size of it to say nine and a half by 13, that change is gonna have a huge impact on what the hash looks like. And it's the same thing. So if you change the file size, it's gonna have a different measurement here, just like it's gonna have a different measurement, it's going to have a different hash or a different description or a different property. So that's the best way to think of it. This term aggregation, that simply means the collection of publicly available information. And inference is another term. And inference basically means that you're going to decipher something from that collection. So aggregation comes first and then inference comes next. There's a nice little acronym ACID here as well. If you're having trouble memorizing this, uh, I remember when I was studying this, I got aggregation and inference mixed up quite a bit. <clears throat> but remember that aggregation, if you spell them in this order to spell acid, aggregation comes before, aggregation is collection and it comes before inference. Inference is the deciphering acid. is There's another acid acronym, so I wouldn't put too much uh, effort into that. But just remember that deciphering is when you use the collected information to make a decision or to decipher something that would otherwise be confidential. Throttling is another term that we need to be familiar with. And this basically refers to staggering information output. So a uh, way to visualize this would be, for example, if we had a printer that was printing a thousand documents at once, then your printer would probably blow up. It would probably catch fire or something. So we basically want to print, you would want to throttle it. You'd want to stagger the output, have it print a document every 10 seconds or something like that. And usually this refers to information output from websites. So for example, if you had a bank account and you went to your bank website and maybe they have an un unauthenticated web page where you can enter in your account number and it will spit out your interest rate or something like that. Uh, you would want to, if you had something like that, which you probably wouldn't, that's not a good idea. But if you did, then you would probably want to throttle the output of that in order to, to stave off any, any, or to prevent anybody from doing what's called uh, account harvesting or account farming. Anonymization, that simply refers to making something statistic ready or basically de-identifying it. So for example, if you had a, a database full of social security numbers 
that you were getting ready to publish, you would want to remove the social security numbers and only publish the information that would be uh, not identifiable. So if, if, for example, you had my SSN and a description of my, of my, of my height, my weight, and my co the color of my hair and all that, if you took the SSN out, you'd be de-identifying that because there are a lot of people who would fit my same description. You'd be making it statistics ready. Tokenization is a little bit different. Tokenization refers to replacing the information. So if there were a bunch of SSNs, you wouldn't want that. Uh, if you were going to tokenize something, say you had a database of your company's employees, if you were to tokenize the information, you would basically replace the SSN with an, a fake or a fictitious or invented employee ID number that would be very generic and not, uh, not something that somebody could use anywhere else. So for example, they wouldn't be able to take the employee ID number and go to the Social Security Administration or to, uh, to open a, a credit account under, under your name. Once again, thank you for watching. Head over to cissprep.net where we have over 1,200 questions, practice questions, and, and our free super study guide. Thanks and have a great day.